here to talk about pharmacoeconomics. Pharmacoeconomics is a type of outcomes research, which is a broad, complex, methodological discipline that really looks at the results, the benefits, the real world impact of interventions. So it's very broad with an outcomes research. And then you have pharmacoeconomics, which is a type. And then from there, it is also a subtype of health economics because it focuses on the pharmaceutical interventions. It's often used to inform, decision, to inform decisions of resource allocation within institutions, like we mentioned. So pharmacoeconomics is really looking at both the pharmaceutical side, so the pharmaceutical products and services, tying that in with the health economic side, which looked at, looks at various cost analyses that many public health professionals have. So if you find yourself maybe not within the pharmaceutical space, you still benefit from understanding the different methodology of these cost analyses that are often integrated within pharmacoeconomics, which we'll talk about in a bit. But it's very overarching. It allows you to think about going from the need to effectively and objectively uh, allocate resources to what does that begin to look like and how do we think about that when it, when it comes to pharmaceutical products and services. Now, greater attention has been shown, we've seen greater attention on pharmacoeconomics in general uh, by looking at the sheer number of pharmacoeconomic analyses that have been conducted over the years and how much the methodology has advanced, necessitating the need to really bring this to light and, and requiring that more professionals are well-versed within this area. Now, the demand to conduct and understand pharmacoeconomic analyses has grown out of the need and pressure by decision makers, professionals, and healthcare providers to quantify and justify the value of products and services provided. So like we mentioned, is that not just you're thinking about the best allocation of it, but you also have to justify why you allocated that. So you need now a specific output that comes as a result. Now, pharmacoeconomic analyses in general allows decision makers to look at both costs and patient health outcomes. So moving beyond the clinical outcomes that we're normally used to. Now, the information generated from these analyses can actually be used on a patient by patient level, which I mentioned earlier is something that is interest of mine, but all the way to national policies, which are on a much global scale. And depending where you are in the world, you might use these to a more so, like a greater extent than the other. Now, when we think about pharmacoeconomics in general, where does it play a role? What do we use? Where do we see it used in? Now, the pharmacoeconomic analysis is not the be all end all, meaning it's not one thing that you are using for all of the decisions you have. It is really a tool that is used in several different areas, such as coverage of policies and benefit design, formulary management, pricing decisions, the drug approval process, uh, de developing drug use and treatment guidelines, as well as disease management programs. So there's various different areas in which we use pharmacoeconomics as a tool. Um, there are limitations to these analyses, which we talk a lot, which I talk a lot, a lot about in the book. So recognizing when and where we can use this is very important. Now, in general, this slide here just shows what are some questions that these types of analyses help answer. So in the case, if you're thinking about is the added benefit of one pharmaceutical product or service worth its added cost, then you begin to think about should I conduct one of these analyses or should I look to evaluate one to help me in my decision making process? Should we add or remove a medication from the formulary is another common question that we see with the use of these. And also when we think about what are the costs and clinical imp implications of adding or removing, right? So this is the whole conversation around moving beyond just costs to think about how do we take this information to figure out whether we reimburse for a product or, or not. And then the same thing applies for a new service. So if you were to add a new service, um, you also are now, there's different choices that you might have in terms of how you deliver that service, which then begs to differ, is that worth the added cost?